OK, today we're going to talk about covering spaces. And we've already seen a covering space. So um, we, in talking about the fundamental group of pi 1, in showing that the fundamental group of pi, I'm sorry, showing that the fundamental group of S1, when we showed that pi 1 of S1 is isomorphic to Z, the group of integers, we did that by a particular construction. We showed that there was a map, a projection map, from the real numbers onto S1. Now, we often think of the real numbers as a line, but in this case, it helped us to think about it as more like a helix. Extending indefinitely for both directions, mapping onto the circle S1, where if this is the map P, the pre image of your base point here is each integer up here, right? So if this is like 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, all your integers map to this base point. And then as you travel around down here, it corresponds to traveling from one integer to the next, right? So we can make this precise. For example, we could define this to be the map that sends t to, if we think of S1 as living in two-dimensional space, that would map to something like cosine of 2 pi t sine of 2 pi t, right? And so this was our way of seeing that there was this nice map from R to S1. And then what we argued is that looping around once down here just corresponds moving from one integer to the next. And if you want to do a jump from one integer to two larger than that integer, that corresponds to looping around twice, right? And so this was a way that we started to see that loops down here, or homotopy classes of loops, loops up to homotopy, are equivalent to integers. And that's how we showed there was this isomorphism. OK, so this is also an example of a covering space. Um, let me give you some more examples of quick covering spaces, and then we'll do a quick definition. Um, here I had this cycle going infinite. Uh, it doesn't have to be infinite. You could instead have a helix that maybe only loops around a couple times, so something like this guy. And then at some point, instead of continuing up, it just comes back down to the bottom. Now, I don't want this to cross over himself. So this is kind of hard to imagine visualizing this in three-dimensional space, because in three-dimensional space, he would intersect himself. But you could, you know, this is my attempt to represent what I'm trying to draw here, which is a map from, really, this is just a circle. It's just a circle I twisted up. And it looks like I twisted it up so it goes around one, two, three times. So that you're going around three times the circle to go around here once. That is, going around the circle once is going around him. Um, going around this circle once is going around him three times. So if I just move, if I just go around him once, up here that corresponds to just not even going the full circle, right? As I just go in from this point to this point. And if I did go the full circle, if I did go around the full circle, that would correspond down here to going around three times. So this is a map P from S1 to S1, twisted up S1, but that's my way of trying to think of is just a copy of S1 where going once down here is only going one third of the distance, where you could define as something like the map z to z cubed. If you think of these as living like in the complex plane, right? If this is like the unit circle in the complex plane, then cubing is just tripling the amount of distance you go around. 
So there's another example of what we're going to call a covering space. In general, you can do this for any power. You know, it could be a fifth power or a twelfth power or whatever, where it's just thinking of a helix with that many rungs, or thought of another way as a helix when you travel around once, it travels around this many times the circle below. And this is kind of the ultimate example, because if you travel the entire real line once, it's like traveling around this infinitely many times, right? So you can think this is like the extrema of this case. So let's give my definition now. Here's a couple motivating examples, but here's my definition. A covering space is, <coughs> um, let me rewrite this. We're going to say x tilde with some base point, x tilde uh, not, is a covering space for some space x with some base point x not if there exists <coughs> some map that sends x tilde onto x. And of course, this map should be sending the base point x tilde naught to the base point x naught, such that if you're given some open cover, given an open cover u alpha, this is some collection of open sets that cover your space. So an example of S1, your open cover might just be this open set that comprises just over half of the circle and this other open set that comprises just over half of the circle. I, I, I just mean the one dimensional, I'm just sh sh showing you surrounding you know, the stuff inside this green region, stuff inside this orange, there's two open sets. That's an open cover, the open sets that cover. Or you could have three if you wanted, or five, or however many you want, just make sure it covers, so they need to overlap so it covers it. Um, an open cover, such that when you have an open cover, for each open set in that cover, either the, blue or either the green one or the orange one, the pre-image of that open set, like what is the green mapped to up here? What, what gets mapped down to the green? The pre-image is a disjoint collection of open sets, each homeomorphic to u alpha. So like, what's the pre-image of the screen set right here? If, if still I have my base point here. The pre-image of this green set would be like, you know, all of these halves of the helix. There's infinitely many copies of him upstairs, right? Or over here, you know, what's like the pre-image of the screen set? It's again, just one, two, you know, three copies. There's just one, two, three copies of the green guy upstairs. That's all I'm saying. So, if you look at any section above, it's just copies of that section. Okay. Happy with that definition? Now, with this definition, there's a dumb covering space that would also be a covering space. So here's a dumb covering space. Just take like three copies of the circle and map to one copy of the circle, where you just send all of the points on these circles to the corresponding point. So then the pre-image of like, you know, this base point would be these base points, and the pre-image of like this open set would be these open sets. So this satisfies the definition. But this is just a whole bunch of copies of a single circle, which is like the special case here is doing z to z. You know, or you could have like a couple of these copies, plus then do a copy of 
you know, like a little helix if you wanted to. Um, how do I draw my helixes? You know, you could, you could stack together a bunch of the other um, covering spaces and just have a disjoint union of them, and them together is also a, a covering space. So a disjoint union of a bunch of covering spaces is still a covering space by this definition. But this is kind of dumb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict our attention to when my covering space is path connected. Um, otherwise, you just have disjoint copies of the things you actually care about. Okay. Cool. So we have a bunch of different um, copies of possible um, covering spaces for Z. So maybe what I'll do now is I'll give you the big theorem that we're going to be talking about in the case for Z. In the case for, for S1. But it's really dumb for S1. Like it's very simple for S1. And then we'll do a more complicated example and we'll really see how rich this theorem really is. So here's my S1. We have lots of possible <coughs> covering spaces of S1. One is this helix that wraps around twice. So, okay, I'm gonna have a tough time drawing all these helices, but let me try to do it. And I think I've already screwed up because this actually wraps around three times, doesn't it? That wraps around three times, doesn't it? Okay, so let me try to do one that only wraps around twice. Like, okay. I, I exaggerated it too much. That's twice. Um, and you have maps. These are all covers of this guy. Maybe it's easier if I actually just draw the circle here where this circle, these two points, both map down to this base point. Whereas here, it's these three points. So you can try and think of it as an awkward helix. Maybe it's easier if I draw it like this. These three points map down here. So if you think of this as like from here to here is some loop A, that means you have an A takes you from here to here, an A from here to here, and an A from here to here, right? And likewise here, we have an A from here to here, and an A. <laughs> and, and you can have more examples. Like you can think about the one where you circle, draw a PLA, where your circle has, <coughs> it's like a fourfold helix where the map is z to z to the fourth power. That is also a covering space. <coughs> However, I argue that this guy is also a cover of this guy. Because when you travel from here all the way back to himself, it's the same here, just going around twice, right? Now, you don't have a map from this guy to this guy. He is not a cover of him. Because if you travel once around here, you would travel a little bit more than once, and you don't end up at a loop down here. So this, this is not a cover space of this guy. But he is a covering space of this guy. And you can kind of see what's going on. Like, four is a cover of two is a cover of one, Three is a cover of one, right? Um, six would be a cover of both of these. You can start seeing some of the, what's, you know, this guy that goes around six times. <clears throat> oops, oops. Six copies of A would be a cover of both of those. And, and he's also a cover of this guy down here. <coughs> so we start seeing some structure emerging where you have covering spaces that are covering spaces of other covering spaces, and sometimes they're not. You get this graph that emerges. Well, if we keep building this up, here's my question. What is the one covering space to rule them all? 
is there a covering space? That's a cover of all of your other covering spaces. And if so, what is it? You can be like, well, two things have a covering space. You just kind of have to be like, well, it has to be a multiple of both of them, right? So if it's like, two and three, it's six. And if you want six and four, it'd be like 12, right? Or 24, anything that's multiple of both of them. But so what should be like at the very top? Infinity, which is just R, right? So the one covering space to rule them all is actually R, where R is itself a cover of this guy, but it's also a cover of all of your other covering spaces. It's just here to like achieve a loop down here, you have to go up four integers from like zero to four or one to five or whatever four integers you want to do. And to achieve a loop around this, you just go up three integers, right? So there's like one cover that covers them all. Okay, so th this might be somewhat interesting, right? Um, but now let's take it one step further. Let's think about pi one of these spaces. Well, this is where this example might be a little bit silly because all of these are just circles. So all of the pi ones are just z. But I, let's think about pi one in terms of what's generating it. Like this pi one, what's the fundamental group of this space? What's my fundamental group down here? Here my fundamental group is just the group generated by a. You know, any number of copies of A. Whereas if I look at this guy, what's my pi one here? What generates the pi one of this space? It's still gonna be Z, but what's my generator? It's A squared to get a loop, right? It's any number of copies of A squared. You could do A squared, you could do A to the fourth, you could go to twice, you could do A to the negative two, but it's copies of A squared. How about this guy? Well, here, it's just gonna be a cubed. Here, it's a to the sixth, and so forth. This is a to the fourth. Uh, wait, was this a to the fourth? Yeah, this is a to the fourth. And how about you pi one here? Well, the fundamental group of R, we said, is trivial. Zero or one, whatever you used to denote the trivial fundamental group. And what I want you to notice is that A squared, this group here, is a subgroup of A. So this group is a subgroup. Likewise, A cubed is a subgroup of A. Everything generated by A cubed sits inside of everything generated by A. It, there's stu stuff in here not, there's a stuff in A not in here, like A to the fifth is in this group that's not in this group, but this is a subgroup. <clears throat> and A to the sixth is a subgroup of both A squared and A cubed. Right, like if this is everything generated by A to the sixth, like A to the sixth, A to the 12, A to the 18, um, trivial, A to the negative six, that's all can be produced by multiples of a squared or multiples of a cubed. So this guy is a subgroup of both of them. And a to the fourth is a subgroup of a squared, but it's not a subgroup of a cubed, right? And the trivial group is a subgroup of every group. Every group has a trivial group as a subgroup. And so we're seeing there's a relationship now between pi one the fundamental group and the covering spaces. That is, if you're a covering space of something, then your pi one is a subgroup of the pi one of that other space. So, so what we're seeing here, and, and what I'll try to convince you of is in fact, there's a bijection, shouldn't be obvious right now it's a bijection, but there's a bijection between covering spaces where you have some x tilde mapping onto some x with some base point 
mapping onto some um, base point x naught. There's a bijection between these guys and <coughs> subgroups of the fundamental group of your base space. <coughs> and the association between these is just where <coughs> over here your covering space x tilde x naught corresponds exactly I've been saying it's pi 1 like I've been saying that this is like pi 1 of this space up here what, what this really is though like the fact that I'm calling this a squared here is I'm actually thinking of what happens when I take this loop and I map it down here then it becomes a squared like, like me drawing one loop up here as a squared is actually me thinking that one loop has been mapped onto two copies. So what it actually is, is it's the image of the projection map of pi one of the covering space. But this is an injective map. So, you know, it was z and it's still z. It's just, I mean, I write in terms of these generators, I'm really thinking in terms of the projection of it. So there's this deep structure between this topological thing called covering spaces and this geometric characterization, uh, this, this um, algebraic classification of subgroups. And here, the subgroup that corresponds to one, well, what does it mean to be, have, a, have a pi one of one? A pi one of one means you are contractible. Well, it means that you, um, your, your pi one's trivial. And we said we want a common space to be path connected. So what do we call spaces like this? Yeah. Simply connected, right. So a simply connected covering space, <clears throat> when you have a covering space that's simply connected, <coughs> if you're simply connected, that means your pi one is trivial, which means your subgroup of every other subgroup, which means you're a covering space of every covering space. So that corresponds to being what we call a universal cover, a universal cover. You cover all covering spaces. Okay. So I'm gonna show you a little bit richer of an example, and I think you'll really start seeing the structure emerge in that richer example. So here, let's think about for my base space x, and this will be my base point x naught, let's think about the space that's a wedge of two circles. A wedge of two circles. So you already know what the pi one of the space is. What is, let's do a different color. What is pi one of x? Yeah, it's the free group of two generators where your generators are just your a and your b. So this is a group made up of all words you can make with a and b, and inverses of a and b. So in this group are like the words a, 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 or a, b, a, b, a, b, or b, a to the negative seven, b to the negative five, a cubed, whatever, right? That's all the stuff in that group. <clears throat> so we want to start identifying some covering spaces of this space. So maybe, maybe these aren't obvious, but like you help me, can we build a covering space? Well, you should think locally, like the, the whole homeomorphic condition there is saying locally, the covering space has to look like this space. Not overall, but if you just look at a section of it, it needs to look like this space. So like whatever the base point is up here, it should look like that space. It should have coming out of it an A, going into it an A, coming out of it a B, and going into it a B. Now what happens next? You know, totally up to you but that's what it should look like locally. So here's one possibility. It could look like this. <coughs> so 
So this is, this is my A over here, this is my B, this guy's A, and this guy's B. So think about like how that maps onto here. It's like if you were following this loop A, and, and we should pick one of these to be my base point. So I'll pick this one up here to be my x not tilde. This is just another vertex, but this is my x not tilde right there. And this guy starts off at a vertex and follows A to a vertex. Looks identical to what happens here, right? From there, you could follow B to a vertex. You could follow B to a vertex. Or you could follow like A backwards to a vertex. You could follow A backwards to a vertex. So locally, what's going on here looks like what's going on there. But globally, it looks very different. Are we okay with that? You can think about covering this with open sets and seeing which open set matches. Like there's a little open set around this X, which would have as its pre-image an open set around this X and this open set around this X. You could have this little open set that's just this section of A, which would have as pre-image two little sections of A. And you have a section around B, which would have as pre-image two around B. So this kind of corresponds to like the double helix over there, right? Just how you had the circle that mapped round around itself twice to go down and bottom. This kind of is corresponding to that here. Now, what I want to think about is what is pi one of the space? <coughs> What is pi one of this space? And yeah, I don't know if that's obvious. Um, how would you guys think about pi one of this? Um, you consider as you, you, you create, instead of having two generators, you kind of have four, whereas all of your kind of two letters, you have your AA, -A, your AB, your A, yeah, AA. -A. Yeah, okay. So you could say, tell me, what, what, are, what, are, what are them again? It's actually not A. A is not a loop, so A can't be one of them. Well, I mean, you go down to A1 and then go back down to the other way. Ah, so A squared is one. Like, you have a loop here, A squared. That's a loop. Yes, B what else do you have? There's a B squared loop. That's true. What else do you have? Uh, you could do A and then B. That's right. You could do B and then A, that's true. Uh, A backwards, then A. You, um, oh, if you go A backwards and just back up A? No, go down this. A backwards, then back up A? Well, that's the whole topic to trivial, right? But you could also do it with like A backwards, then B. Oh, okay, you could do A inverse and then B. Or you could do like a B inverse and then A. <clears throat> There's a lot, but this is actually going to be quite redundant because all we need to list are the generators and many of these are the same. So, so what do I mean many of these are the same? I claim that all of the ones you're saying is the same as just listing as your three generators, A squared, B squared, and AB. You could list, try to list them all out, but they could all be built out of these. So let's like check that really fast. If you're not, you know, this is like some algebra review here. How can you build BA out of just these three? And the inverses. Remember, in a group, you can take the inverse of things. So how can we get like BA out of these guys? A, B yeah, so you could take your AB inverse, which is going to give you B inverse A inverse. And we ultimately want to get BA, right? So stick a B squared at the beginning and an A squared at the end. A B squared and an A squared. And then we see that comes out to be just a BA. So you actually get BA from the first three. And likewise, I argue you can get A inverse B. How do you get A inverse B? Well, that one's even easier. You take your A squared inverse to give A minus two, and then times it by your AB. And then you get your A inverse B. And so on, right? So all these other ones were redundant. Okay, so how, how can you know in general that like, you really only need three generators? One way to think about it, um, remember 
that when you take the quotient of a space, if you're taking the quotient by a path-connected component, a path-connected contractible component, pi 1 is preserved. So we could have just taken the quotient by one of these spaces, uh, by one of these guys. Um, taking the quotient, so you could like, you know, take a quotient of this guy and um, that will shrink it then to um, a wedge of three circles. So you should be convinced that it should be isomorphic to something that has three generators, right? So like that's one way to see it's three generators. But when you shrink it, it will change the presentation of the group. So like once you take the quotient, now A becomes a loop, whereas down here A is not in this presentation. This is just one way to see um, the number of generators. A more general method is when you have a graph, you take a maximal tree. In this case, a single line becomes your maximal tree. And you just count the number of edges not in the maximal tree. And the number of edges not in your tree gives you the number of generators you need. So, so your number of generators here is the number of edges not in the maximal tree. So, so number of edges not in tree will equal your number of generators. And then you just have to make sure you get one generator for each of those edges. So um, one presentation, if I was picking him, the presentation I would have gone with would have been to get this guy, this edge, I, I include the tree and I include that edge. So, okay, this is gonna look weird because if I follow the tree first, uh, I'll do him first and then the tree. There's A squared, that includes my tree and this edge. If I were to include this guy, it would be like A inverse B. And if I want to include this guy, it's like the same as like BA. Okay. There's, there's one presentation for the group. But this presentation is, is the same as this presentation. Because you can build B squared out of these guys, or you could build, you know, how do you build B squared out of this? Um, well, you can just take the inverse of this guy, multiply him by this guy, and then... Oh, sure, these guys can multiply. That's right, and that just gives you B squared. And you can get AB just by multiplying A squared by A and inverse B. So, depending on the method you do, you might pick a different presentation. But these are all presentations for the same thing. The key is to make sure you have enough generators in your presentation, and your sanity check for that is just count the number of edges not in some maximal tree. And, and then make sure that you actually have guys that are de de independent of each other, right? And these are, there's no way to get AB out of A squareds and B squareds. Like, you can convince yourself of that. There's always a win of A squared, there's always a B squared. He's truly independent of those guys. So either one of these two would be a good presentation. I, I'm gonna stick with this presentation because I think it just kind of looks cleaner, doesn't it? Like, it's more intuitive. So I'm gonna erase him. But what you can see now is he is a cover of him and the subgroup of this guy is a subgroup of him. Of this fundamental group is a subgroup of this guy. In here, you have things not in here, right? So what's one thing in here that's not in there? What? Just A. Just A, yeah. You like, there's a single A or A cubed, or like an odd power of A or an odd power of B would be in this group, and it's not in this group. So, you know, this is truly a proper subgroup. It's not, it's not the whole thing, it's just, but anything you can build out of A squareds, B squareds, and ABs, you could build out of A's and B's. Okay, let's look at another cover of the space. So let's look at another cover of the space. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> here's another possible cover. Well, we want to have some point that maps to my x zero, my x not tilde. And I just have to make sure locally it looks like this. And so I can even keep this a the same. And over here, I'll start doing my B, but what I'll do is I'll break this B up. So one goes out, one comes in. <coughs> and then here, I'll just put another loop for my, for my A, and one needs to go out, 
then one needs to come in. So some, oh, one needs to go out and one needs to come in. So something like this, right? Okay, I claim that this is also a covering space for this guy. So um, this space here just maps onto here. This B maps all the way around. This B um, maps onto going the opposite way. And then this A maps onto here. So it's also for each open region here, there are two upstairs that map to it. Just like here, there were two that map to it. But here the two map to it in a different way. So, so if you're not clear what I mean by that, I mean like this little X, the pre-image of this X is both this little X and this little X. And then the pre-image of like this section of the A is this section of the A and this section of the A, whereas the pre-image of this section of the B is this section of the B and this section of the B. Just like over here, how the pre-image of that X were these two X's, the pre-image of that section of your A, the open set covering that part of your A, is those two, and the pre-image of those two covering the B are these two. So these are both examples of covering spaces that kind of double up when you map down. Later on, we'll develop this idea, we'll call this a two-sheeted covering space. It's, it has multiplicity two. Okay, and we'll pick this to be my base point. <clears throat> now, let's think about what is pi one of this guy. So, so can you tell me what is pi one of this brother? Well, maybe it's a little bit hard to see it, but we'll use our generator trick. A maximal tree would be something like him, right? Which means at the end of the day, we should have a total of one, two, three generators in the pi one that correspond to those three edges. And so several different presentations we could give of the pi one. But give me a nice one. What's a nice presentation for this pi one? Well, here it's just a copy of A. How about something that uses him, this edge? What, what a circle over there be? B yeah, something like um, B squared. That's right. And how about an edge that uses him? Yeah, you could do B, A, B, or you could do B, a, B inverse, and those are equivalent because they just differ by multiple of B squared, right? I'm going to prefer B, A, B inverse um, for reasons that may become apparent in a minute, but you could also do B, A, B. That also works. Okay, so now we found pi 1 of that guy. And I claim that this is a subgroup of this. That's clear to see because this is everything generated by A and B, and these are all built up of A's and B's, except you have some restrictions, right? So like up here, you have just a single B can exist in this group, but no single B exists in this group, right? Okay, <clears throat> very good. Um, maybe there's something else worth mentioning right now. What would happen if I change the base point? What if instead of having my base point be x0, which is gave us this presentation, I made this my base point? I'll call it y not tilde. Let's find the pi 1 for this space of this cover with base point y not tilde. What does he give us? Well, you still just have a single loop A. You still have um, b squared. And this guy over here can still be written as B, A, B. B or B, A, B inverse. So it's the same. The choice of base point didn't matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is maybe clear. Picking that point or picking this point is like picking the same point because this is a completely symmetric diagram. So these are the same. These are equal because your diagram here is symmetric. Likewise, over here, this diagram is symmetric. Picking this point is like picking this point. This is also a symmetric diagram. But your diagram doesn't have to be symmetric like this. So let me give you one more example of a cover. 
Let's think of, oh, I'm going to have to erase this by junction. Let me show you a covering space that's not symmetric. And then you might think the choice of base point actually begins to matter. So I'll start the same way. I'll start the same way with A, and then my Bs, and then I'll do a round of A's, and I'll end with a B. And now you can see that this won't be symmetric in the way that's symmetric, right? I mean, even this point seems like it's different than this point in some way. Like this point has a loop on one side, whereas this point does not. So let's find the pi one for both of these guys now, but with, you know, let's say this is one of the, um, let's call this like x not tilde, and then we'll do y not tilde. We'll find pi one for both of these. So let's first find pi one at x not tilde. What is my pi one? Well, I could pick some spanning tree. I can see now that there are four edges remaining, so there should be four generators. And a good name for those generators, like here, it would be something like a squared. Here it would be something like b squared. Here it would be something like b a squared b inverse. And here is something like B A B A inverse B inverse. B A B A inverse B inverse. Whereas if I shift over to the base point, why not? How are things different? Now I'm here. Yeah. Oh, you're right, that's just A. There's a single loop around it, very good. Down here, I'm now at this base point. So if I wanna get that A, I have to like travel along B, and then I can do my A and back. So this first guy instead of A is something like B inverse AB, right? Or if you want to, you could have first traveled along B inverse, and then done your A and traveled back along B, whichever way you want to. Now, the second guy for this edge, it just becomes a b squared. Still just a b squared. This next guy is now just an a squared. And this last b, I'll still need to go along a, do b, and then come back. But what's the difference between this guy and this guy? How do they differ? To go from here to here, we have these B inverse Bs at each step, right? Even here from B, you could think there was like a B inverse and B, it just doesn't make a difference. Here you lose the B and B inverse by adding a B inverse to the beginning of B at the end, canceling that off. Here you lose the B and B inverse by adding a B inverse to the beginning of B at the end. So to move between this, it's like you're moving from an element G to the element B inverse GB. Or you could have done it by moving G to B, G, B inverse, either way. So now for those who've taken abstract algebra, what is this operation called? Conjugation. Yeah, this is the conjugation. Here you're finding the conjugate. Which makes sense because conjugation is just moving a base point. You move at the beginning some, along some B or B inverse, and then you reverse that at the end, right? So moving base point is just, and, and you could move the base point here too, it would be conjugated by a longer word. So changing base point is just conjugation. But if that's the case, then when are these going to be the same? These are going to be the same when it's not changed by conjugation, right? <clears throat> and what do you call a group that's not changed by conjugation? Or in this case, these are subgroups. What do you call subgroups that are not changed by conjugation? Normal. So. This guy here is not changed by conjugation, and this subgroup is normal. So you have a normal subgroup 
exactly when you have a symmetric um, covering space. Because if you're symmetric, then you can change base point, but your um, underlying fundamental group won't change, which means the fundamental group must be normal. So now there's a nice connection between the algebra and <coughs> the geometry of the covering space. Okay, we've seen a few covering spaces now. Oh, by the way, um, is like this guy a covering space of that guy? He is a covering space of the original space X, but is he a covering space of this other one? Can you build all of these out of these? Well, you could get A, you can get B squared. Can you get this guy? Yeah, uh, you can get B A squared, B inverse, which is multiplying B A, B inverse by itself. Good, multiply B A, B inverse by B A, B inverse, and you get B A squared, B inverse. How about this guy? B A, B, A inverse, B inverse. Or you could think of it as this guy, A, B, A inverse. Yeah, I don't think you can. And that should correspond to this not nice way to map this onto here. Because it's like you have this problem of where do you map this A to? Up here, this A is not a loop. But, um, oh no, that's, that shouldn't be fine. That should be fine. Ah, B. This B is a loop. But the moment you map B down, it's no longer a loop. So if it started off as a loop, it should still be a loop down below. But the problem is he's a loop up here and he's not a loop down there. So there's not a cover. This, this guy is not a cover of this guy. And um, this presentation will not, either presentation, will not be a subgroup of that guy. Yeah? You don't need the same number of vertices because you can have two mapped to one. Yeah, so now you're starting to think that, um, well, maybe if a cover is going to be a cover, there needs to be some kind of like constant um, number of like multiplicity going on. And so it does turn out to be the case that the number here needs to be a multiple of the guy there. That's right. Because it's like, um, what is the pre image of this guy? And then what's the pre image of that guy? And you can convince yourself, well, it needs to be a multiple. So this wouldn't work. But maybe if you add one more and you have four here, it will be a, a cover. So very, very good observation. Okay, let me just show you some more exotic covers, more interesting covers, right? So, so here's a more interesting cover that you've never seen before. So let's, let's think about this guy. So let's make this my X naught here, the cover of my X naught. And I have all these other vertices. And each of these loops, I'll have represented A. And each of these will represent a B. Yeah? OK. And so at each point, you have an A coming out, an A going in, a B coming out, a B going in. Right? And I claim that this is a cover of the space. <coughs> okay. What is pi 1 of this guy? Good. Make your tree just this line down here. So there's going to be infinitely many generators, right? One for each loop. Now, this first one, it's pretty clear what this first generator is. It's just A. You know, this first loop is just an A. But what would be like this guy? Well, I would need to travel along B, then do A, and then travel backwards along B. Or if I wanted to do this guy, I would travel along B two steps, 
do A, and then travel backwards along B two steps, and so forth. Is there a, do you see the general form of this? This is just going to be the group generated by, um, how do we do it? B to the n, A, B to the minus n. Right? Where that also accounts for going backwards. Like this is B inverse A, B. That's like n is negative 1. Or you could do 12 steps of B and then an A and then back 12 steps. So where this is n is any integer. So this is a, a, a free group with infinitely many generators. And, and that is a subgroup of this guy. Is that a subgroup of any of the other ones? Any way you can see that as a subgroup of anyone else? How about this guy? I claim there's a mapping from here to here. Um, so let's say this is still my x naught, is this point right here. Then, you know, it's like this loop around here maps onto this loop. And then you travel along B, you travel along B, and then this loop would map onto this guy. And then you travel back along B, you travel back along B, and then this next loop would map back onto him guy, right? And so you have like this little X maps to like every other one, and this little X maps onto every other one. Take some time to think through this. But that should correspond to him being a subgroup of this guy. Can you build this up, all these powers up from him? Well, we already have like, you know, you already have for free right there, B A B inverse. How can you get, oh, and then if you use your B squared, you can get B squared A B to the minus two. How do you get B cubed? Well, you just take this guy, B A B inverse, and stick a B squared on either side, and a B minus two. And now you have your B cubed a, B to the minus three. And how do you get B to the fourth? Well, stick a B cubed on either side of this guy. So now you see how, uh, stick a B squared on either side of this guy. And so now you can just keep building up this way. So you get all of these powers. Great. And even the trivial case where N is zero is just A, which you already have there. And negatives um, will just come from taking the inverses of, of these. So sure enough, this is a subgroup of this group, which means he is a covering space of this space. And he's a covering space of that space. We're starting to see the hierarchy develop. OK. Let's go to the extreme. In the extreme, we would want the fundamental group to be trivial. So I want some space where my pi 1 of this universal cover should be trivial. 1 or 0, however you know, trivial. No loops up there. No loops. Right? This is saying no loops in my space. But locally, it should look like this pattern where at every point I have an A coming in, an A going out, a B coming in, a B going out. So however you want to draw it, A is coming in, A is going out, B is going in, B is coming out. And that's looked at like that everywhere. So what is this going to look like? How do we draw this space? Like, let's just start to try to do it. So, so we might just begin by putting like a loop here. Like, here's my, here's my cover, here's my x naught. Uh, here's my, my base, the cover of my base point. And I'm just going to have B's going up and A's going to the right. But like, eventually this needs to go, it can't be a loop, so it has to go to some other point, right? And these all have to go to some other point. But then like, what happens at that point? Well, it should have like the same local look to it. Locally, it should look the same. Where again, you'd have like your B's going up 
and your A is going to the right. Your B is going up and your A is going to the right. But then like, you know, if you go up a little bit, what happens? Well, at some point you should hit point. And then at that point, you know, it should also have that cross design. And you follow down, it should be a point. And, and what, what is this gonna be? It's just this fractal. So the universal cover just comes out to be, you know, I can't draw the infinite fractal, but you have to just understand, like, you pursue any of these directions, it just keep, goes on forever. And so I'm trying to represent that with this like crude approximation. And, and, and I'm gonna keep drawing it smaller and smaller and smaller, but locally it just looks like that at every point, right? And so, you know, you could fill this in with as much detail as your patience and skill permits. But you get this infinite fractal. And we avoided having any loops, so no loops, and locally it looks just like it does, and this nice infinite cover. Which means this is also a covering space of all the other covering spaces, right? And so you should like, take some time to think about like the map from him to him. What, is, what does he look like? Like if I start off at this point, going along B is going to the right, or I could go along A, like going here, is like going around here. And then B is going to, uh, B is like going up this way. So, you know, you can think about what each of those maps look like. <clears throat> but now that you understand him, I think that we have the idea, we can start building all kinds of other covers. So give me some subgroup of AB and we're gonna build a covering space for it. So give me like a simple one, like with one generator or something, a really simple, um, give me a really simple subgroup of A and B. Which one? A times, a times B, I love it. So let's build a cover, let's do it in pink, whose pi one is AB. <coughs> so we have to have like a loop that corresponds to AB, right? So I have to have inside of here something that looks like you do A and then you do B. I'll call this point up here my cover of my base point. So from there I do A, I do B, there's my AB. Now, I want to have no other loops in this space, right? Because I don't want to have any other thing else, no other words. This is my only loop I want. So what should the rest of the space look like? Well, I have an A coming out, I need an A going in. And I have a B coming in, so I need a B coming out. And I have an A going in, so I need an A coming out. And I have a B coming out, so I need a B going in. Okay, so I have to build stuff over here. What is it gonna look like off on this, off on this branch? He's just gonna repeat this fractal. He's just gonna look like that crazy fractal design going on forever. And same thing off on this branch. He's just gonna be that crazy fractal design going off forever. And same thing on this branch. It's just gonna be that crazy fractal design going off forever. Pretty nice, right? Okay, let's do one more. Give me another like nice simple subgroup and let's draw the um, covering space for it. How about we just do something like, I don't know, A squared. You tell me, what will the covering space for A squared? Oh, and then, and then you should think about like how you map this onto here. Right, like this, this is nice activity. But what is the um, covering space that corresponds to the subgroup A squared? Well, I need to make sure I get an A squared. So how do I get A squared? It's exactly this, except I just do an A here and an A back, right? And this is gonna look exactly the same. Okay, so it's just this, it's just make that A and A and those all Bs. Okay, so let's make a different one. What if I wanted, maybe that's too similar to this one. What if I just wanted a single copy of A? The group generated by A, that's a subgroup of the group generated by A and B. What does that look like? Here, I just want to have a single loop that corresponds to my A, and I still need my Bs. I still need a B coming in and a B going out. And so what do I have on those two branches? I just get this crazy fractal. 
this, I don't know, this kind of looks like some kind of thing, right? Like a seed sprouting some crazy trees or something. It looks like something. Okay, so, so now we're starting to see that there's a really nice way that um, understanding the subgroups of your fundamental group um, is the same as understanding the covering spaces. And there's this beautiful correspondence between covering spaces and the subgroups of the fundamental group of pi one. So next lecture, we need to formalize this a little bit. I've been doing this all just by example. So next lecture, we'll formalize this. Um, but this, this is the story that we're gonna see. So that's all for today.